the end screen. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay. Nathan Lamb. Oh, good. Okay. Patrick, well, you and Con. We're good. We have four. Okay. Caller three may be a member. Well, we'll find out. No, Allison, no. Tony's not going to renew his uh, his membership. Got too much going on. Yeah, I understand that yeah, totally. Yes. So, are we doing on time, John? It's at nine. Okay. I'll put my my watch. I have thirty seconds. seconds. Five seconds. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Garland. I'm chairman of the Urban Conservation Commission. This is the May 26th uh, meeting of the uh, Urban Conservation Commission. Uh, permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Tom Fallon. Here. Uh, Patrick Cunningham. Here. Nathan Rand. Here. Michelle Colross. Allison Holmes. Okay. We have four members present, we have a quorum. And then uh, with regard to town officials, who are participating, when I call your name, please respond to the affirmative. Building Commissioner Caleb Moody. Here. All right. So good evening, everyone. Um, this meeting is now called to order at approximately 7 or 1 p.m. Uh, this meeting is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the ongoing state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting on the town's website, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Uh, <clears throat> for this meeting, the Conservation Commission is convening by remote participation for the public only, although some staff are physically located in the planning board meeting room at Town Hall. Uh, those town employees are practicing social distancing in accordance with the governor's orders. For the public to join the meeting remotely by telephone, call 1-408-650-3123 and enter access code 942-845-549. For the public and join via computer at gotomeeting.com backslash join backslash 942-845-549. The remote access information has been posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. And please note also that this meeting is being recorded by Auburn Cable Television. So accordingly, uh, for those members of the Conservation Commission, employees and members of the public who participate, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, and please take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. So with regards to tonight's meeting, all supporting materials uh, that have been provided to members um, of this body are available on the town's website, and the public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. Now, before we turn to the first item on the agenda, let me go over some ground rules to uh, permit the effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. So I, as chairman of the commission, will e introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair, meaning me, will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions, and please hold until your name is called. And please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate uh, minutes. Uh, for any response, please wait until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. 
If members wish to engage in discussion with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. <clears throat> After members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. The chair will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. And once I have a list of all public commentators, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. And please note that any vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. And before uh, we start, I want to acknowledge the presence of our land news clerk, Ginger Buta. Here. Right. For, okay, so the first item on tonight's agenda is a 7 p.m. public hearing. Uh, Alliance Environmental Group a request to amend an existing order of conditions for periodic on-site vehicle washing activities at 33 Sword Street in Auburn. Is there a motion open? So moved, Tom. Is there a second? Second, Pat. All right, Pat, thank you. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Tom? Aye. Uh, Nathan? Aye. Patrick? Aye. And I also vote aye. Is there someone here on behalf of <coughs> Alliance Environmental Group? Tom, this yes. is Al Holmes. I'm also here. Hi, Allison. I say aye. Well, Sorry, I'm tardy. Okay. You're, you'll be forgiven this time. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, in, in any event, is there anyone here on behalf of the Alliance Environmental Group to present their request? Yes, uh, I'm present, uh, Tom Hefner. Hello, Mr. Hefner. So we received your filing. Do you care to just give us a summary, a brief summary, of what you're proposing uh, to do? Sure, I have a quick overview. Um, <clears throat> is it okay if I begin? Yes, please. Okay. Um, good evening. Um, thank you for having us on the agenda tonight. I'm Tom Hefner, and I'm a registered professional engineer with Alliance Environmental Group. We are here tonight to assist FW Webb with their facility on Sword Street. We have a permit question for the board but would also like to provide some background on the situation at the site. FW Webb recently renovated the building at 33 Sword Street, and as part of the renovations, included an upgrade to their stormwater system. Since the wetlands area is located in the northern portion of the property, a notice of intent was filed with the Arbor and Conservation Commission, and an order of conditions was initially filed at the Worcester Registry of Deeds in 2018, July 2018. The order of conditions was later amended in July 2019. The new FW Web store opened in late 2019, and there were concerns about vehicle washing at the property. We reviewed the recently installed stormwater system and made a submittal to amend the order of conditions in January 2021. With the public meeting mail-on requirements, we did not make it onto the agenda until late March. Um, but in March, uh, March 26, the, present, the, the presentation topic was the new stormwater collection system, and we believe that it had the technical capability to handle the low volume of wash water that would be generated during the periodic washing events which would happen every two weeks. The meeting was continued so that we could produce additional information to address the concern of dissolved contaminants, making it through the new stormwater system to the wetlands area or the northern portion of the property. And we also needed to provide information on the proposed detergent to be used. At this time, we made a connection with Fleet Wash Fleet Wash is a company out of New Jersey that specializes in green mobile truck washing. Fleet Wash has been in business for over 40 years and it provides truck washing services in 43 states. Fleet Wash has over 1,500 employees and more than 750 trucks in their fleet. Fleet Wash has a vacuum containment system that we're considering uh, to use at the FW website on Sword Street. That was the package of information that was mailed to the board, uh, submitted to the board last week um, on May 20th. The uh, vehicles would be washed 
in the vicinity of a catch basin or a low spot. Catch basins are typically constructed in low spots so that the surface flow can make it to the catch basin structure. The catch basin, by the vehicle washing, is covered with a rubber mat that will not allow water to flow into the catch basin. The vehicles are washed in an area close to the covered catch basin so that the, back, the water that flows to the covered catch basin over the impervious pavement is vacuumed up for off-site disposal. The pavement ends up being damp after the vehicle washing operations, and any ponded wash water is also vacuumed up for off-site disposal. The wash system uses about three to five gallons per minute of water. That's the equivalent of a garden hose at your house. Uh, we'd also like to note that the detergent that would be used as part of this operation is eco-friendly and biodegradable. Uh, safety data sheet, SDS, was included with the package that was submitted to the board last week. So in this proposed vehicle wash application, no wash water would be discharged to a catch basin at the site. All vehicle wash water would be collected for off-site disposal. Fleet Wash carries $25 million in liability assurance, insurance and assumes full responsibility for the isolation, collection, safe transportation and elimination of all wash water involved in their vehicle washing process. So to get to the point of a question to the board, because no wash water will make it into a catch basin at the site, we feel like a permit or an amendment to the order of conditions should not be required by the Conservation Commission. There is no vehicle wash discharge taking place to a catch basin as part of the proposed application. If a permit is not required, we would like confirmation of that condition from the board, and we would also like to move, out, move to close out the existing order of conditions that was used for the recent renovation and construction work at the site. So um, that's well, there are, that's, that's my initial um, presentation, Mr. Hebner. That isn't that isn't uh, that a separate issue though? If you're asking for to close out the current order of conditions, it seems to me you need to file a request for a certificate of compliance. Do don't you agree? Yes. Okay. So I think um, my suggestion would be let's uh, address the issue that's at hand with respect to the the vehicle washing. Uh, so I. I will tell you that I reviewed the materials that you, you submitted to me. Um, it, it's, it seems pretty self-evident to me that if, in fact, you're not discharging uh, any detergent or any um, uh, water used um, to, to, uh, to wash the trucks at FW Webb, then um, and, and all of the, the water, uh, wastewater, is then collected by Fleet Wash, then uh, there is no need to amend the order of conditions because you're not, uh, you know, you're not putting effluent into the um, the drainage system. That's at least that's my opinion based on the materials that uh, that you submitted to us and based on your presentation. Um, Tom, do you have any questions? Uh, no, no questions. Okay. Uh, Patrick, any questions? I remember when we first presented, um, or first uh, heard your presentation, that there was question of why it had to be right at the catch basin, and the original reasoning was that the catch basin um, was going to um, uh, treat the water, um, and that was the reason uh, it had to be near the catch basin. If you're going to be vacuuming the water, would you consider washing the vehicles away from the catch basin? Um, instead of covering it and then uh, vacuuming it. Uh, so, Mr. Hebner, um, you so can answer that. Sure. Um, yeah, the, ap the application can be moved around. I mean, that was, um, I, I guess, that new area at the back of the site. Uh, they recommend that you have competent um, pavement. Uh, the pavement is new in that back area. And it's pretty obvious that if you're out there in the area that we were 
proposing to wash, um, all the water would run to that catch basin and there wouldn't be an issue. Um, as you look along, if, if you're standing on Sword Street and you're looking along the right side of the building, um, there's probably a couple of opportunities. We could probably move it back along the right side of the building and still probably find a couple of low points to be able to capture the wash water if um, that's what the board would want to see. Well, I think um, my concern would be, um, you know, I, I, I could see a situation where you would actually, after you put the, the rubber membrane over the, um, the grate for the catch basin, that you, because it's a low point, um, I'm assuming the water would <coughs> congregate there and it would be easier for it to be vacuumed up or removed by, you know, by the company. Um, my, my concern, of course, is that there, there are wetlands um, uh, behind, at, at the back of the property um, that uh, had to be reestablished, uh, you know, uh, prior to, to the construction activities of FW Webb, and I'm sure we all have concerns about uh, any of the wastewater ending up uh, somehow ending up in, um, in in that wetland area. So th those are my concerns. Um, Nathan, do you have any questions for Mr. Hebner? No, I don't have any questions. Okay. Now, I did see before we started that uh, Mr. Arnold, I think, is here on behalf of the uh, of Butter. Mr. Arnold, are you there? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. So, Mark Arnold with Gutter Consulting, just here on behalf of, of the uh, Butter at 31 Ford Street. Um, so, uh, I, I, I do acknowledge that the, um, the system that FW Web is proposing is, is excellent. I think it's the best. Uh, choice for this property to make sure that basically all that water is properly treated and disposed of um, rather than risking the stormwater system discharging it into the wetlands. Um, I, I do think it would be great if it was part of the uh, an order of conditions and recorded at the Registry of Deeds because it, it creates a chain of events that's in the registry of what procedures are actually going to be followed on the property um, just in the, for the future. Um, possible future property owners and other things just to make sure that the track record um, and also just provide the commission a little more um, ability to have that again reported versus just a, a notification from the owner saying this is how we're going to be watching vehicles uh, on the property and I don't want that to become a we're allowed to watch vehicles on the property and then a year from now we change methods because of the new owner. So that would be my only comment um, but again I think if the system is used the way it's supposed to be used um, the wetlands, I think, will be will be best protected in that way, and uh, I appreciate the, uh, the methodology that was submitted. Is it was very good. okay. Uh, Chairman, this is Allison Holmes. I um, I also was going to sort of mimic the same thoughts. Um, you know, I think it would be good to have it down in writing somewhere where we can actually specify what it is that we're approving here. Okay. So, um, Mr. Hebner, what I'm hearing is that I think, uh, well, maybe not a consensus perhaps, but there is some suggestion that uh, perhaps the materials that you submitted, specifically the, the standard operation, uh, I'm sorry, the standard operating procedure uh, uh, that you submitted, I mean, and perhaps a copy of this, uh, the safety data sheet, uh, is something that could be um, added to um, an amendment to the order of conditions and could then be recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Um, would your would your client have any objection uh, to um, to doing that? I I I'd have to confer with the client. Okay, I mean I, I wouldn't be able to make that decision on the spot. I mean I think the reality is that I think it's within our our authority as a board to 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 make that determination. So and I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but. Um, I mean, I think it, it makes sense. It, it does put people on notice, including perhaps a future uh, buyer of 33 Sword Street, that um, this is uh, a requirement that uh, in order to, to wash um, uh, trucks at the site, that this type of uh, procedure should be followed. Mike, uh, Mike Perry is the general manager of FW Web. Did Mike Perry make it onto this call? Is there a Mike Perry in the audience, the Zoom audience? It doesn't sound like Mike made it onto the I don't, call. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I would, 
so it, when would it, is this considered a simple amendment to the order of conditions? Uh, I would, well, speaking for myself, I would consider it a, consider it a simple uh, amendment. After all, when this was a, when this was submitted to us originally, it was a request to uh, to amend the existing order of conditions, and so I think, you know, it, it, this is something that would, you know, prior to I think the uh, the thought of using fleet wash and and, uh, and making arrangements to actually remove the wastewater from the site uh, instead of um, um, letting it, allowing it to go into the the, uh, the drainage system on site. Uh, there, I think there was an anticipation of amending the uh, the order of conditions to include those types of activities. So I think even though uh, this proposal doesn't result in any, um, you know, any any additional effluent or any effluent for that matter going to the drainage system, I think it, it makes some sense, um, as has been indicated by Mr. Arnold and also by Ms. Holmes, to again have that as part of um, the order of conditions because it puts people on notice. Um, what what needs to be done with respect to uh, the truck washing activities at the site? Does that make any sense? I understand. I understand. Okay. Uh, do, uh, Mr. Hebner, do you have any other questions or any other comments? Uh, well, I mean, I, I I do I do feel this is a little out of the box because I. I you know, tend to be of the opinion that there is no discharge to the wetlands, there's no discharge to make it into the catch basin. So, um, you know, the easiest way to get a permit is to not need a permit to a certain extent. Um, you know, and we, we, we wanted to be up front with the board because there were some questions of, you know, uh, vehicle washing previously at the site. So, um, you know, that's why we, we came to the board. Um, I guess I was expecting um, a decision of no permit is required, but I understand the consensus about, uh, you know, if there was a change in ownership and, uh, you know, they, they might change the method down the road and they might think it's okay to dump uh, wash water into the catch basin. Um, I, I would like to note that the, uh, the wash water, the detergent is eco-friendly and biodegradable, um, you know, and, and fleet wash does, um, there was uh, terminology in there about, um, you know, their, their, you know, $25 million in liability insurance is, is pretty significant. And, and fleet wash, when you contract them, is assuming full responsibility for the isolation, collection, safe transportation, and final elimination of all wash water involved in the vehicle washing process. I, I understand, and, and sir, just uh, don't misunderstand me. We have um, we have not taken a vote on this yet, and so I cannot tell you um, honestly what um, the commission's going to decide to do, but I just, again, as you heard from the, the public comments, I think there is some thought of perhaps, um, you know, recording this at the registry just again to put people on notice, but that that decision has not been made, and I'm, I'm pretty confident we will vote on this a bit later, um, assuming that you want to close a public hearing this evening. Is that my decision? Well, well, it's actually the decision of your client. If you have, you've made your submittal. I know this thing had been, it's been on, ag on our agenda actually since, uh, since March, and it's been continued right. several, several times at your, at, um, at your request, and so, Unless you have anything else to submit, um, you've made your presentation, you've told us what you wish to do, and I think it, it, it makes sense to close a public hearing at this time. Sounds good to me. Okay. All right. Uh, before I, um, we close a public hearing, uh, are there questions from any members of the commission or anyone else for that matter? I just had one question. All right, this is Tom. I was just, I was just reading through the information here, and I was looking on the phone, and um, I just think that when they when it's called that it's uh, echo friendly, I, I agree that it's great that it cleans it up. But basically, um, sodium hydroxide is lye. Mm -hmm. So if you had a 55 gallon drum of lye stored somewhere, you would probably need some kind of a permit for it. Now I know they clean it up, and it's watered down and diluted, but it's still, if in the event there was a spill, which is highly unlikely. 
Um, that's why I kind of concur with the other board members that it might be good to have this recorded on the registry of deeds just for future reference, just to make sure that you know that any kind of fleet cleaning in the future is done with the method that's going to make sure that nothing's going into those catch bases. Understood. Um, this is the Elson <coughs> moment, sorry. Okay. Uh, I was just wondering, so the question about, you know, having to do it in that location on the property, being close to the wetlands, and I'm not sure if, if the answer was, was given or not, but how close are you, you know, proposing to be doing this work near the wetlands? Well, I mean, the submittal, the submittal that we made in um, January that, that um, vehicle wash area on the right side of the property towards, um, you know, the, the, the if you look at All the land, the uh, right, so north, northeast part of the site. Right, um, as close to it, the as possible, so. Well, yeah. I mean, we also, you know, the, the, the stormwater, the stormwater infrastructure in there is um, state of the art, and there is an old water separated. That was part of the original proposal, and then there was a concern about the dissolves. At this point, I mean, as far as a, a capture area for the vehicle wash, that is that is a pretty good area because um, you you've got a, a a lot of area to work with where. It's going to flow all in one direction. They have the vacuum. Um, they have the vacuum um, wash water um, technology that they're using, and they also verify that the rubber mat that's on top of the uh, catch basin um, is intact, and it won't allow water to um, go into um, the catch basin. If you look at, if you've been out to the site and you look at this back area. The, the, the um, asphalt burn that runs along the edge is, um, is is solid and intact. It's newly constructed. Why would it not be? But the, the, the probability of um, wash water running over that berm, I mean, vehicle wash work would not be done during a rain event. So it would be done typically in dry conditions. So with that low flow of water, three to five gallons per minute, um, it, the likelihood that it would ever make it into the wetlands is essentially non-existent, in my opinion. And, and, that, and, and, and Go ahead. Oh, excuse me? I was just going to say, that, that's wonderful that you're using that method. The problem is your proximity to the wetland and the wetland resources. Mm -hmm. And so I just think we just need to document exactly what's allowed in this area. And, you know, if it, it shouldn't really affect as long as it seems like you guys want to do it the right way, so what's the problem with just putting it in writing on the board of conditions so that when the berm in the future gets, you know, broken down, I mean, this is, we're talking about a long time, not just right now why everything's perfect. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm receiving texts while I'm on this call, and apparently it's, it's approved from, I mean, I know the board hasn't approved it, but if the board uh, would want to move forward with an amendment um, that includes these provisions um, where uh, FW Web would want to go in that direction. Okay, that's good to know. Can we all, can, can you, can we stipulate that you will not wash any vehicles within 100 feet of the wellings? Okay. Um, I So we would we would definitely have to stay along that right side of the building. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would work on the left side of the building. Okay. But if you move along the right side of the building, there probably is an area that would be able to set up and would be. I think they have the I think they have the capability of berming. Also, they can berm and capture in that area in, within areas using that vacuum technology. Because uh, I'm seeing. Um, if you look back on the plan that I submitted from mm -hmm. uh, January, uh, the end of January, and we the, um, yep. So, so that thing, can you scroll over to the center on that plan? Uh, 
uh, like, yep, mm -hmm. going in the right direction. Right, so that's, see that center graphic? That center graphic shows the 100 foot offset. All right. Yeah, could, could you scroll up a little bit more, please? Uh, upwards. No, 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 no. Oh, the other way, down. You're going down. See the 100 foot buffer. There we okay. go. Okay. Uh -huh. So, so can you can you see that 100 foot buffer zone? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the 100 foot buffer zone. So if we're if we're doing vehicle watching, we would want to be out of that, and we would want to have the collection out of it also. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? No, my question is, can you can you stipulate that you will not wash vehicles within 100 feet of the of the of the wellings? Yes. Okay. Yes, we can do it along the right side of the building. All right. Good. Very good. All right. Um, are there any other questions? All right. There being none, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Make a motion. We close the public hearing. Tom. That's Tom. Is there a second? A second. All second. All right. I'm going to give it to Patrick. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Tom. Aye. Uh, Allison. Aye. Patrick. Aye. Nathan. Aye. And I also vote aye. All right. The hearing is closed. We have a vote. So, Mr. Hebner, thank you for your. Uh, for um, making your presentation, and um, I feel confident we will render a decision this evening. So thank you very much, sir. Okay. Um, how will I be notified of the decision? Um, I will let you know when it has been approved, and I'm sending it out to you. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good night. So that took longer than I thought. Um, the next hearing is a 705 public hearing. Uh, the Massachusetts Electric Company knows of intent to install new <coughs> utility poles at Leicester Street and Rochdale Street in Auburn. Is there a motion to open? So moved, Tom. Is there a second? Hello? All seconds, Mr. Nathan. All right, thanks, Nathan. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Tom? Aye. Allison? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Nathan? Aye. Patrick? Aye. And I also vote aye. It's a vote. All right. Um, I believe I saw Ms. Graff on earlier. Ms. Graff, are you still here? Yeah. Outstanding. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you fine. So uh, thank you for your patience. The first hearing took longer than I I think we all thought it was going to be the case. So, uh, Quite all right. so if, if you would, um, we read the materials, and if you um, if you wish to make a brief presentation, um, go ahead. Great. Um, do we have the map that we could pull up? Uh, I think it might just be called the plan. Okay, that's a topo. Uh, we're pulling it up now, I think. Which, which one? Is it the operational okay. plan? Uh, no, it was just the environmental resource plan, but that's okay. I'll, I'll describe everything. It's just sometimes it's nice to have a visual. Sure. We can have the photos. That works, too. Okay. <laughs> Great. Outstanding. Um, <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Heidi Graff, and I'm with BST Group. I'm here tonight representing the Massachusetts electric company for the installation of several new utility poles, a ground grid, and a new overhead line associated with the distribution line upgrade along Leicester Street and Rochdale Street in Auburn. The notice of intent was submitted for review under the Wetlands Protection Act and implementing regulations and the local bylaw. Specifically, uh, the activities include the installation of five new poles along Leicester Street two new poles along Rochdale, and then the ground grid at pole 60 on Rochdale Street. There is associated vegetation trimming um, along the distribution line, and there is one 
proposed removal of a dead 28-inch uh, oak tree, and that is between holes 103 and 104 on Leicester Street. Um, so it's, it's oh great, the, the plan is up. Yes. Um, um, it, and that, that is a deceased tree, so there are no live trees uh, proposed for removal with these installations. The new poles are proposed within bordering land subject to flooding the 200-foot riverfront area associated with Chapman Brook and the 100-foot buffer zone to BBW and Inland Bay, as well as the locally regulated 25-foot and 50-foot zone. The ground grid um, is proposed in the 100-foot buffer zone to BBW and the locally regulated zones as well. This project is proposed um, and is necessary in order to interconnect a new solar site on Leicester Street to uh, Massachusetts Electric Company's distribution, distribution system. Uh, we're also proposing to replace Pole 60, so we included an exempt maintenance notification in the application. Right. Uh, we believe the project meets the criteria to be considered a limited project. Uh, would you like me to go into detail on the number of cubic feet for the, the three poles that are proposed in floodplain or, you know, how far each of the poles in, in riverfront area are from the, the street? Or I don't, I don't want to do too much if it's not necessary. No. We can run through the photos if that helps. Uh, that probably would help. But let me ask you this. Um, are you, will you uh, require a waiver from us um, regarding construction within the 25-foot buffer zone? If a waiver is requested, I required, I will request a waiver. Okay, that's well. That's what I thought based on your presentation. Mm -hmm. So, okay, um, yeah. If you um, if you could just describe um, the Welland impact um, as succinctly as possible. Okay, um, so we have uh, no impacts to bordering vegetated wetlands or impacts to bank in riverfront area. There are seven poles proposed, so that's 14 square feet of permanent impact in riverfront area. Um, in the bordering land subject to flooding, we have three poles. We've calculated the elevations at each of those poles within the floodplain, and it's 2.61 cubic feet of floodplain uh, that those poles would take up, which is a, approximately a 20-gallon uh, kitchen size trash container. Um, and in the buffer zone, it, we have our ground grid, which will just be temporary ground disturbance when they install a, sub, uh, a superficial subsurface uh, grounding copper mesh below the uh, ground level for grounding, and that will be backfilled, so it's only permanent disturbance for, for that. Now, I'm curious, how deep uh, do you need to dig in order to uh, plant one of these poles? So for the pole installation, uh, they'll auger a hole approximately six feet deep, and then they'll direct embed the telephone pole, backfill with any of those uh, soils, and remove any of the soils that are left. And what, if you know, what's the average time to install um, a, a single pole? Uh, sometimes it takes them a few hours. Sometimes it could take a day, depending on how um, how rocky or how challenging it is for them to offer the hole. I see. Okay. And do you have an idea of, uh, so the whole project should, shouldn't take that long. Is that fair? Maybe a couple weeks? There are some other uh, replacement poles along that street. So the new poles that have to be permitted, those would be relatively quick when you consider the other replacement poles along various streets in Auburn. It would probably be a couple weeks to I don't want to, don't hold me again, don't hold it to me if it takes more than, you know, a month or two. Um, it would be how quick they could uh, get their scheduling resources. I'm curious, how many poles are they planning to replace? Uh, replacements, we submitted a maintenance notification um, for, I believe it was 28 replacement poles along Re Leicester Street and the Bell Ave. And I think there was also a replacement on Bryn Mawr that are part of this project. Okay. And uh, when uh, do you propose to, or when does uh, Mass Electric propose to uh, begin their projects? 
I believe they're hoping to start it sometime in August. They have a interconnection date that they're required to meet with the customer. I'm not sure of that date exactly, but on the latest call they are looking. If they can start in August, they would like to. Understood. Okay. Um, thank you. I have no other questions, but uh, I'll, I'll survey the other members of the board to see if they have any questions. Tom? No questions. Allison, any questions from Ms. Graff? No, I do not. Uh, Nathan, any questions? No questions. And Patrick, any questions from Ms. Graff? No, I do not. Ms. Graff, all I can say is you were very persuasive in your presentation this evening. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Bef and before I let you go, is there any uh, comment from the public uh, to uh, in connection with this uh, project by Mass Electric? Okay. Since we're being greeted I by think someone, I think someone's trying to talk. They're just muted. I we can't hear you. Here I am. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes. Can you identify yourself, please? I'm Ellen Ethier. I live at 404 Lester Street. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Ethier. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, thanks. So I have some questions about the poll. Uh, in your group of pictures right here, um, if you could go back about three of them, if you can see a picture with a chunk of tree missing. A chunk of tree missing. Yep, keep going. One more. That one. Okay. See, you can see the bridge, oh, and you can see yes. there's a light. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's our property, and that chunk of the tree was taken out when a truck tried to make a turn, um, and he couldn't get out of the um, area. And I assume he was coming from uh, a <coughs> silver farm up from Leicester Street because it was a trailer with a huge tractor on the back end of it. Okay. So where that light mark is, does that mean there's going to be a new hole at that spot? So there, yep, if you drive down Leicester Street, you might be able to see a, a wooden stake and it's painted, so it has red on the top and then white um, down at the bottom. So that is just um, going to be a support pole. Um, okay. It's a little shorter than the, the full-size utility pole, and it's going to support the pole that's on the opposite side of the street. So okay. there won't be a pole back there on the hill. All right, I, I have noticed um, the little stakes around, and I wasn't sure what they were for. So we have other support poles on our front lawn also. Are they going to be changed, or they stay the same? Are you that whole section um, down from the corner to, to that first driveway up? We are from there all the way to Drake Court. Okay, so, yep, there, there are several, um, they call them, step poles, so those are the support poles. There are several um, step poles I know I've seen along that section of the road that will be replaced. Those will be, what about all the poles that have the white X on them? Yes. Yep. They are all replaced? Yep. Will they be replaced in the same location? Yes, they sidestep the poles, um, so they'll do them as close as they can to the same location, and then that way that existing pole can be removed, and then they fill that hole. So I, the reason I'm asking is my neighbor across the street has a pole in the middle of her driveway. Yo, oh, yikes. <laughs> yeah. Does that stay there? Um, I and they don't want it in their front lawn because they don't have much of a front lawn. But right. the pole is in the middle of the driveway. Um, I would assume that it, if it's um, not being... Not an you know, on it. <laughs> yep, so it would probably be replaced um, in that section, you know, if it's a challenging, and I'm sorry, I'm not an engineer, and I didn't make the plan, so I'm not right. sure exactly what they'll do there, but sometimes if it's a challenging location, they'll use the same hole, so that way, if, you know, if they're limited and they can't sidestep them, they'll just install it in the same location. Would they consider moving it over? Uh, would that impact the support hole that's on my front lawn? It could impact the, other, the alignment of the other poles. Okay. But I don't, I don't know the answer to that since I'm not part of the engineering team. Right. Is there any way we can find out about the placement of the poll? Um, there is probably, I wonder who you should contact. There's definitely got to be someone. I wonder if it would just be a customer service or an outreach number. I have no idea. 
<laughs> well, for, um, that's why I'm attending your meeting. I got yep. the, I got a notice, and so that's why I'm asking questions. Yep. So, um, how about if I go back to the environmental team and see if I can get a phone number, and I'll follow up with the commission. Okay. Would that be acceptable? That would be acceptable. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, thank you. So, um, in any yeah. event, uh, Mrs. Ethier, uh, Ms. Graff will um, will try to get you the information. Actually, it's the information for your neighbor. But I'm sure your neighbor appreciates the fact that you uh, you called in this evening. So, um, do you have any other questions for Ms. Graff, uh, Mrs. Ethier? No. So, I, I what I understand is that you're going to add a new pole to our property, and then you are going to replace the two that we already have. Correct? Yes. Okay, and, and you will are, try to do them next to the location they're in right now? Right, and if they're on, any poles that are outside the public way would require easement, so I would think that's something that engineering would have, um, would reach out about. Right, because they're, they're set back probably three feet from the road. They're, they're in the front lawn. Mm -hmm. So there's one in the front lawn and there's one in a, and, um, in a wooded area, but still um, a couple feet in. Right. So they would need to contact us before they replace them? If, it, if they're outside the public way, they would, would contact us. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate your time. All right. What is your, um, I'm sorry, One. I have one question for Mrs. Sure. Ethier. Um, what is the address of your neighbor in case um, Outreach wants to contact them directly? They would have their information. I just would like the address. So I believe sure. their number is 403. They're directly across from my house. Okay. And you, and you can see where my property is here. I think we have about 600 foot frontage or somewhere in that area. Yeah. Um, and they're the small ranch house directly across from okay. my, you know, house to house. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any other questions for Ms. Graff? There being none, is there a motion to close? I make a motion to close the public hearing. Tom? And that was Tom. Is there a second? Mr. Allison, I'll second that. All right, thank you. And I'm going to uh, take a, a roll call vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Tom? Aye. Allison? Aye. Nathan? Aye. Patrick? Aye. And I also vote aye, so the, we have a vote. The hearing is closed. Ms. Graff, um, if time permits, I believe we will issue a decision this evening. So I want to thank you for your presentation and for answering um, Mrs. Ethier's questions. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. Good evening. Have a good night. You too. The next item on our agenda is a 710 public hearing. Kevin Javier, a uh, request for determination of applicability uh, for installing a fence at 9 Rockwell Street. Is there a motion to open? So moved, Tom. Is there a second? Valentine, I'll second that. Okay. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Tom? Aye. Allison? Aye. Nathan? Aye. Patrick? Aye. And I also vote aye, so it's a vote. Uh, Mr. Javier, are you present? Yes, sir, I am. All right, well, thank you, sir, for um, for uh, your patience. The um, meeting has taken a little bit longer than we thought, but uh, I am glad that you are present. So we have your um, your request for determination of applicability, and you were kind enough to submit uh, photographs, which mm. I presume show your yard? That's correct. Okay, so if you would just sort of generally explain what you want to do, sir. Absolutely. Um, I'm looking to install a fence to protect my children from being able to uh, accidentally enter into Leesville Pond or intentionally. <laughs> and uh, you know, the fence will be key posts um, with welded wire fence. Um, so there would be no, um, you know, uh, invasive land uh, augering or digging required. Um, it would just be, you know, slamming the posts into place and then putting up the fence accordingly. In order to do that, I will need to uh, remove uh, a few branches, weeds, um, and other brush, if you will, 
um, that's in the way of being able to install that fence um, right along that tree line. Um, and I want to do it as close to the trees as possible um, behind the first layer of trees even uh, to just create more of an aesthetically pleasing uh, fence. Uh, have you measured um, the area or the distance between where you want to put the fence and, uh, and I guess the beginning or the bank of Leesville Pond? Yes, I have. That was included in the proposal, okay. and I believe it was five to seven feet variance. Ah, okay. And um, how will you install this fence? So the installation of the fence, as I mentioned, is a T-post. Um, there is a T-post uh, hammer that I will be using. Uh, the T-posts have uh, angled uh, metal at the bottom that they dig right into the ground. Um, so as long as I hand them from the top, they go straight into the soil and there's nothing else required. How deep will you go? Uh, they are six foot posts and I'm remaining four feet above the ground, so two feet below, uh, below grade. Okay, so if I hear you correctly, you don't need to do any, uh, you don't need to auger holes or do any sort of excavation to insert the posts? That is correct. Okay. And how, I'm, t I'm trying to visualize this. How do you drive the posts into the ground? It's actually called a post driver, <laughs> and it has two handles okay. on, um, so it's, it's, a, it's a cylindrical uh, metal, uh, ho a cylindrical hollow metal uh, tool with okay. two handles, one on either side, and you just go ahead and put that over the post and slam down on it as hard as you can. Yeah, so while you were speaking, uh, Mr. Mr. Moody and Mr. Fallon gave us a visual decide, uh, presentation. So I, I think, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. So uh, you must turn your video on then, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, we have no video to share with you, uh, Allison, I apologize. Oh, I see. I <laughs> All right. Uh, Okay. <clears throat> All levity aside, uh, are there uh, are there any questions from members of the board? Tom, um, nope. this is Allison. I was just yep. I think you said it, but I didn't quite hear. Did you say you wanted to put the fence on the interior of the tree line, or on the exterior of the tree line? Like a, the fence, and then the trees, and then the wetlands. Uh, so there are so the. the the tr between the trees and the, and the pond um, is probably about eight feet of uh, brush, right? So between the first, um, between my grass and the pond, I should say, there's about eight feet worth of brush. Uh, I would like to be able to put it at least behind uh, the first row of trees next to my uh, grass. Again, so that you're not able to, to see the fence and it's a, be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Um, there, there aren't any trees that would need to be cut down. This would just be branches that are in the way um, and vines and, and weeds. Um, so again, it's, it's nothing that I would need to be cutting down trees for or you know digging into the ground. Um, but simply because I would be cutting into some of the greenery, the brush, uh, I wanted to make sure I did it the right way. I mean, I think, you know, you're very, very close to the bank of this pond. You know, you're very much within 25 feet of this wetland. Um, it, you know, obviously I would like you to be able to put up the fence and protect your children and your dog. Um, my suggestion would be to do the fence on, you know, to, to do as little destruction and little, you know, alteration of, of the resource area as possible, you know, because that's really what we're here to protect, um, you know, within reason. Okay, thank you, Allison. Um, Nathan, any questions? No, I don't have any questions. And Patrick, do you have any questions? No, I do not. Okay. Um, if there are no other comments, is there any member of the public that would like to be heard on, uh, on Mr. Javier's application? I actually have a question. 
Oh, Chairman. Mr. Mr. Moody has a question, please. I just question through the chair for the applicant. Has there been a survey done to ensure that the fence will be on your property? Uh, there has not been a survey uh, that I have conducted. However, the property is abutting the town of Auburn, uh, Leadville Pond ownership. Um, so, I, you know, I'm sure that the commission, you guys would be able to share uh, what is and what is not your property. Um, uh, actually, my understanding is, go ahead. No, actually, no, no sir, we can't do that. Uh, okay. we, we don't have access to that information, and so I think what describes your property would be the meets and bounds description in your deed. And so my suggestion would be, and I think Mr. Moody raises a very good point, before you uh, perhaps put a fence that's on town property, and therefore would can you know really be considered a trespass on their property, you might want to consider looking at the meets and bounds description uh, on your deed. And then if there's, and sir, I don't represent you, and I'm not representing to you. I would have, I would assume it's fairly accurate, but I can't guarantee that. Um, you may, you may want to consider, um, and again, not to add to your expense, but you may want to consider hiring a surveyor if there's any question concerning where your property ends and the town's property begins. Just a thought. I, I think, very much appreciate that. You know, and, and, and uh, Mr. Harvey, what I would suggest further is that um, since I think that question needs to be answered before we can act on your, uh, your request, it might be a good idea to continue this public hearing uh, t at least to our next meeting in June, if that's something you would consider. It is, Mr. Garland. Um, my concern is, you know, obviously the safety um, with, with a toddler running around the yard. I, I do want to be able to put something up in order to protect him um, and, you know, the, the dog from being able to uh, get into trouble. And, you know, in this case, it is a temporary solution, right? The uh, the posts are removable. Um, they're, they're not concreted into the ground or anything like that. Um, and so if, if a decision could be reached today, um, obviously contingent upon um, the, the, uh, the survey or, you know, the, uh, the meets and bounds, um, that would be much appreciated as well so that I could utilize, you know, the time that I have between now and the next meeting uh, to be able to put something up. This is Allison. I, I'm just going to suggest again that maybe you move the fence inward a little bit, and then this wouldn't be such. Neither of these things would be an issue. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you're saying, uh, you know, I guess on my lawn is is that the, the recommendation? Uh, I, well, I just think it'd be safer. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no. You. I think right now, I think Mr. Uh, Mr. Mooney's raised a uh, really a question that goes beyond. Your, your application, the question being, where does your property end and where does the town's property begin? And um, uh, I can tell you from uh, other instances where uh, someone has built something on town property or um, uh, it was a water district uh, property, I think, several years ago, and uh, it, it was not um, considered, they were not happy with the fact that there was an encroachment on their property. So, um, that's why I think it's important for you to know where your, your property line really ends. And then I think once you have that knowledge, you can then build that fence on the property line with the assurance that you're not encroaching on town property. And um, right. I, it, seems, I, it seems to me you're not able to do that this evening. And I appreciate that. And like I said, I, I will absolutely look into that further. Um, and in, in the event that I did find the meets and bounds um, did not encroach on the town of Auburn's property, um, I guess is that still something that would need to uh, be being able to remove branches, weeds, vines that were in the way because even if I were to stay on the lawn side, uh, I would still want to make the fence as straight as possible and still want to remove some of that brush. Um, would that still be something that I would need to come to the, the commission? Well, I, I mean, I think that request is reasonable. You know, mm -hmm. as long as uh, as whatever you cut, uh, whatever brush or, or limbs you're removing don't end up in, in in, um, in the pond, that's fine. You know, I don't think there's any question that that would be uh, uh, permissible. So, um, okay. so I guess the, I'm going to ask you the question again. Um, you know, you, if we if we close a public hearing tonight at your direction, I cannot give you any assurance that we're going to uh, 
uh, how we're going to rule on this. And I would, um, okay. I would, you know, err on the side of caution, continue the public hearing for two weeks, because I think we will meet again on June 9th. June 9th. So really, you're you're literally, you know, talking about two weeks from now, and uh, hopefully by that time you'll have a better a better idea of where your property line is, and then you can, um, you'll you'll know where the the fence can be constructed. Understood, and I agree. Okay, very good. So, um, if that's your, if you are, if you are telling us that you agree to uh, continuing the public hearing to June 9th, June 9th? Yep. Uh, what time? 7. Okay, at 7 p.m. So, may I have a motion to that effect? I make a motion we continue the public hearing to, to uh, June 9th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, I'm going to give Dallison. Uh, <laughs> uh, is there any discussion? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Tom? Aye. Allison? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Nathan? Aye. And I also vote aye. So, Mr. Javier, we're going to continue the public hearing to Wednesday, June 9th at 7 p.m. Um, you're, you'll be the first um, matter on our agenda for that evening, and um, hopefully by that at, at that time you can tell us, um, you know, where your property line is. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a pleasant evening. Okay. The next item on our agenda is the 715 public hearing, Eastland Partners. A notice of intent to construct a subdivision at 50 and 190 Washington Street in Auburn. Is there a motion to open? So moved, Tom. Is there a second? All okay. seconds, Mr. Nathan. Okay, we're going to be faster, Nathan. I'm going to give it to Nathan this time. Uh, is there any discussion? Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye, Tom. Aye. Uh, Allison. Nathan. Nathan. Aye. <laughs> Patrick. Aye. And I also vote aye. Uh, Mr. O'Connell, are you here? I am, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. And again, I've um, we we ran longer than I think we expected to, but thanks for um, for you know sticking with us. So um, if you would, sir, we have your submittal, uh, we have the new plan. If you would just briefly go over um, the revisions to your notice of intent. I'm happy to do that. Thank you very much. Uh, for the record, on behalf of uh, 190 Washington Auburn LLC and Eastman Partners, my name is Steve O'Connell from Turning Point Engineering. And the, uh, the letter that you have on the screen that you're sharing, uh, the letter I'm just going to use as my guide, um, I thought it would be helpful to the commission uh, to kind of provide a narrative to the uh, revisions for the plan since you know, it can be a little overwhelming sometimes to just try to look at new plans and decide what's different. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, the crux of these revisions are uh, related to providing a second means of egress, which was uh, being required by the planning board uh, based on input from uh, DPW and uh, the, fire, the fire department. Uh, so what we believe we've done is, is reached a reasonable uh, uh, solution. And what that means is that an emergency access drive uh, from the end of the cul-de-sac subdivision road, uh, crossing over a, a narrow bank and then continuing on to lot two, 24 feet wide, that'll serve as the access drive for future lot two. We, we would have been back in front of you for a separate notice of intent for the development of lot two, which would have incorporated a driveway from the cul-de-sac over to lot two. But essentially what this revision does uh, it, it accomplishes that as part of the subdivision, but it also uh, is serving as a secondary access road for the subdivision. So it's 24 feet, it's 
over uh, to lot two from the end of the cul-de-sac, and then uh, from lot two heading up towards Washington Street, uh, towards lot one, there's another narrow uh, wetland crossing. Uh, the, the, the total combined impacts of the wetland alteration uh, is under the under the uh, the magic threshold of 5,000, which would trigger some additional permitting uh, at, with the Army Corps of Engineers and, and some other uh, EEP permitting. So I wanted to point that out that we're under the 5,000. Uh, we will be providing uh, weapon replication, additional weapon replication for uh, the BBW impacts, and we will be spanning the streams associated with these resource areas. Uh, with a three-sided box culvert, uh, which will completely span uh, the stream and the bank, which is uh, exceeding or meeting or exceeding the performance standards of the Weapons Protection Act. So I summarized that information in the letter that you have on the screen, but it's also uh, helpful to know that with this access road uh, affords an alternative route for the sewer line. So the sewer that's going to service all three lots in the subdivision uh, will now run along this emergency access drive uh, to a pump station within the cul-de-sac of the subdivision. So there would be no longer uh, be the need for a sewer main in the subdivision road. And this emergency access road also affords us the opportunity to loop the water. So the water system will loop by connecting to the existing water main in Washington Street in two locations. Anytime you can loop a water main, uh, everyone uh, who has to use that water is, is, uh, is benefited from doing so as the, the water is replenished from the main in two locations. So this was uh, something that the fire captain, Captain Moore, was happy to able to help us accomplish. Uh, so you know, that's, that's a, a verbal summary uh, of the revisions which we've, we've, we've collaborated on with uh, various and numerous town departments. The plans are currently under review by the planning board's review engineer um, and various town departments as well. Uh, we had a planning board meeting last night. We had some good good input and support from the planning board members themselves. Uh, we feel like we are in the home stretch um, of the approval of the subdivision and wanted to present these revisions to you this evening and seek any input uh, from the commission members. So I probably we'll stop there. Uh, one, one quick other uh, comment is that there were no changes uh, to the stormwater system design that had been previously, you know, on previous iterations of the plan. Uh, a good sheet to go to uh, whoever's driving the bus here is the sheet 3.1. That's what I'm looking it'll at. Yeah, it'll illustrate uh, a good summary of, of what we're talking about. Uh, uh, the um, there it is, right there. You know, so you can see. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, Mr. O'Connell, I think you know us pretty well by now, and you know that we like to take a look. Yep. So, and given the fact that you are, you know, your your plan has not been uh, uh, approved by the planning board, when are you meeting with them again? Uh, it'll be two, uh, two weeks. Uh, okay. So my, my thought, of Mr. O'Connell, is... Um, uh, this weekend, I would not insist on anyone going out and doing site walks, although the weather's not supposed to be very good, unfortunately, this weekend. But perhaps we can um, meet at the property uh, the first Saturday in June, which I believe is June 5th. Could we arrange to do that? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, and just, again, um, the site walk would be limited just to um, to the the the, the, the emergency access road shown on um, on C-3.1. Uh, so I don't think the site walk would take all that long. Um, and I'm, my thought is that we can meet at 9 o'clock, walk the site, walk in that area, so that we um, can, you know, translate what's uh, what's on uh, 
uh, the page of the plan to what is actually out in the uh, uh, on the lot or on the site. So, if, if, is that yeah. is that agreeable to you, sir? Yes, it is. I think it would be very beneficial, as it always is. Okay. So, in that case, um, seven ten. Um, or we have somebody else. Seven o five. Seven o five. You, yeah, you only have the one guy that you just... You're, you're right, you're optimistic. Okay, so Mr. Mr. O'Connell, uh, we're proposing continuing the public hearing to June 9th at 7.05 p.m. Is that agreeable to you? Yes, it is, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, and is there a motion to that effect? We can motion we continue the public hearing to uh, the 9th at 7.10 p.m.? 7.05. 7.05, I'm sorry. Okay, 7 and, that, and that's Tom. Is there a second? Else and I'll second it. Okay. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Tom. Aye. Allison. Aye. Patrick. Aye. Nathan. Aye. And I also vote aye. Okay. So we will continue the public hearing in this matter to June 9th at 7 5 p.m. and we will see you on site on Saturday, June 5th at 9 a.m. That sounds good, Mr. Chairman. I will have the center line of this emergency access road staked for our site. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Mr. O'Connell. Thank you. Good right. to see you all. All right. Okay. We have other business. And actually, um, can we see the list of callers again? There was a Magna Rodriguez, too, I think. Um, hmm? Yes, Magna Rodriguez. Yes, yeah, she's on. 23 broke. All right. A boy's center. Is she still on? Yes. Okay. Um, Ms. Rodriguez? Yes, here I am. All right, Ms. Rodriguez, thank you for your patience. I did not anticipate when we started this evening at 7 p.m. that it would take um, until now to, um, <coughs> to reach, um, you know, your matter. And this concerns... Um, 23 Boy Street. So I actually, um, I had been out there several weeks ago. I met with your husband briefly, and then I walked the site. And um, I think, as you know, we noted that someone had put in what appeared to be wooden pallets in the stream, almost like they were. Tr uh, that person was trying to create a canal or some sort of channel uh, with those pallets. Do you? Um, when did you take title to the property? Um, so we we were we've been here three years now. So January of twenty nineteen. Okay. So oh, twenty eighteen, yeah. And were those pallets present when you moved in? No, they were not. Okay. So who did that? Was my seventy eight year old father in law who went back there and was building and doing stuff and. I just let him, I didn't know exactly what he was doing or what he was trying to do with that. Uh, did he I just want to wreck the matter. <laughs> all right, did he know what he was trying to do? Um, he was trying to divert the water. He was trying to divert the water, See, my husband said. See, um, you, they, you, can't, you can't do that, all right? We have, uh, there's the Wellness Protection Act, and there are also bylaws and regulations that the town of Auburn has issued. And um, uh, first of all, uh, I don't know what what the intention was, but n uh, you can't do reward it like that, Not at least not without giving notice to, to um, our commission. Um, we have jurisdiction over uh, wellness and streams in, in the town. This is something that clearly is within our jurisdiction. Um, the concern we have, though, is um, we don't know. I mean, looking at the, the, the pictures that I took, uh, it's not clear to me how one safely removes those pallets without um, causing the bank to collapse into the stream. Do you understand that? Um, yes. Okay. So it's, uh, it's kind of a problem, and I think we have to come up with some way to resolve it. Okay. So the question is, how are we going to resolve it? Um, that's why I'm, I'm asking you guys to 
here. I just want to rectify whatever he has done. So, um, I really don't know what I should be doing without damaging anything ex back there. Exactly. You know, exactly. That was, so, that, so, it, whatever collapses, can it get, can it get pulled back on our property? Well, we, we need someone, it, whatever is going to be done there, it, someone needs to really investigate this and propose uh, a safe uh, way to remove those pallets. Uh, there are people that actually specialize in this type of work. Uh, what you may want to do is you may want, if you have access to a computer, uh, put in wetland specialist, Google that term and see what you come up with. There are, there are several uh, reputable um, mm -hmm. companies in the Worcester area that um, that might be able to provide you with some guidance. Hopefully they could go there and they could, um, you know, give you an opinion or a recommendation without it being that expensive. But I, I think in this particular case, since it appears um, your father-in-law, um, he, he, he got to work and he did a lot. And um, I think it's gonna take some time to remove um, uh, those pallets. It makes sense to, um, to, to have someone, a professional actually look at the situation and make recommendations to you. That's at least that would be my suggestion. Okay, we will do that. Okay, so um, I don't know how long it's going to take you to do that. Our next meeting is going to be on on June 9th. So perhaps we can continue this for two weeks, and and then we can have another conversation then, and you can let us know what um, what's happened. Does that seem fa is that fair? Yes, of course it is. Okay, so. Um, I, I, our agenda for the ninth is not that full, is it? No. So I'm thinking, um, uh, Ms. Rodriguez, we'll probably be able to, to talk to you about this probably closer to 7.30 than, um, than eight, you know, 8.15. So um, if you could just um, see what you can do to, um, to have someone look at the, um, the stream. And we'll have a conversation with you um, on June 9th at around 7.30 p.m., okay? Okay, sounds perfect. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for your patience, and we'll, um, we'll speak to you in two weeks. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Um, we have other business matters. Um, so, Packachop, the Packachop Golf Course. So, there apparently there's an issue whether or not and I know you sent me an email on this, Ginger, that um, the, is it the, the course manager doesn't think he needs to file with us? It's um, guy from Solitude, Lake Solitude. Okay. He doesn't think that something needs to be filed because it's a man-made lake, a man-made irrigation pond. Okay. Uh, I think he was also of the opinion that the order we just issued with them covered it, right? Which, and I don't that, that was me because oh. on it says Auburn Ponds. Okay. So that that was me. That wasn't him. Okay. Was I him. don't think that pond was contemplated though in that plan. Yeah, I went back and looked, and it wasn't. It was Leesville. You know. I don't know where it got changed. So, um, to be honest with you, I don't know what the answer is. Um, what What are they proposing to do there anyway? They want to be able to take care of it, like they do with Leesville and the other ponds that so they just So they did. actually want to, they want to incorporate that ir irrigation pond. Yes, it, and it's DPW is the one that's addressing them about it. They want Solitude to take care of it. Okay, so maybe um, I can have a conversation with Mr. Coyle about this. You know, and, and I, think, I think the issue is this. If they incorporate the irrigation pond um, under that order, mm -hmm. uh, then I don't think there's going to be a problem. That was just my concern that it wasn't included. So I will make uh, a point to um, to speak to Mr. Coyle about it. So why don't we continue this uh, to our next meeting? Okay. And then um, for Pinrock Road, can you explain what um, what that's all about? There was a paper put into your okay. um, packets 
of a meeting that's coming up and it was addressed to the board if you wanted to attend attend it. Okay. I believe it looks like it looks like an email. That's it. Okay. I think it's a sewer project. Yeah. It involves the state. Actually, it involves uh, us, the Worcester Conservation Commission, and Mass DOT. Mm -hmm. So apparently, this meeting is going to occur on Monday, May seventh, at two fifteen p.m. And it's going to actually, it's going to be the Auburn DPD facility, DPW facility. Do you know if that's going to be available uh, via Zoom? Monday, May seventh has already gone by. I think that's when we received it. June seventh is the meeting. Oh, June seventh. I thought you just said May seventh. I may have. Okay. We, we, we can find out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Should, if I misspoke, I apologize. It's not a test. Um, so my question is, do we know if um, this is going to be by Zoom or WebEx? Yes, I believe it's Zoom. I believe it's right on there. Is it? I is thought it? it was on there. Okay, hold on. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't see any. Um, we can find out. I can, yeah, if it's I at DPW, I'm sure we can we can arrange for. I think it's at the facility itself. Mm -hmm. I think it's like the show us. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, but I. Uh, I didn't. I think they have the ability to um, broadcast via Zoom. So. Um, Zoom said as well. I will. Um, Technology I these days. I will speak to Mr. Cole about that too. Yeah, I think we can arrange that. All right. And then there, something we also did receive was. Uh, an open space and recreation plan update. That is going to be a virtual meeting also on June 7th between 6 and 7 p.m. Monday's going to be a very busy day, apparently, <laughs> for someone. Um, and apparently that's a go-to meeting. Um, is that open basically to anyone? Yeah. So if, if any of you, um, you know, if you have nothing to do on June 7th between 6 and 7 p.m., if you either have an early dinner or a late dinner, and, um, and you're interested to find out what... Um, what Auburn is planning for open space and recreational areas. You are uh, free to join by computer. You have the information. It's at gotomeeting.com, and then there's the information. So, and if I if I can't attend, I will, but I make no promises. So, oh, as our representative on that committee, I'll be there. All right, Nathan. Thanks for stepping up to the plate. Uh, we appreciate it. Okay. I had forgotten about that. Um, with respect to 498 Rochdale Street, um, apparently there's going to be a report submitted by DEP, I think, on or about June 1st. Um, the, the, the abutter, the, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Barocas is uh, very concerned about um, the, the failure of um, the property owner to uh, have um, restored the wetland to the condition it was in before he, they conducted their construction activities about five years ago, I think, four or five years ago. And so I actually had a conversation with an attorney at DEP a few days ago. Um, and my understanding that there is going to be a new uh, report. Denise Childs, who had been, I think, overseeing uh, enforcement at the, the site, has retired. Uh, her replacement is a woman by the name of uh, uh, Judith Schmidt. Uh, when, I, when I spoke to the attorney, her name is Rebecca Tobin. I had suggested that it would um, be, be good for Ms. Uh, Ms. Schmidt to actually go out to the property and took a, take a look around. So hopefully she'll do that. And um, my hope is that when we meet um, next time on June 9th, I will have maybe more information for you. So that remains very much uh, in play at this time. With respect to complaints, um, we, there was the complaint about trash around Darkbrook Pond. Um, I mean, I think it's a valid concern, obviously. I don't know what we can do as a commission to, to alleviate that. Uh, but there was a suggestion, maybe posting some signs of no dumping. Um, I'm talking, who has jurisdiction over Darkbrook? Would it be? Yeah, that's not the water, is it? Would that be uh, DPW? That's the Auburn Water District. But oh, yeah, that's right. So maybe Ken Smith can offer some guidance. Ken is actually retired. And yes. this is a new engineer. Um, when do you retire? April. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Um, Greg Wood. I'll get you his contact information. That would be great. And again, perhaps we can, uh, th there are steps that can be taken to uh, 
Joe, has people put people on notice that uh, dumping trash is uh, permissible? Uh, with respect to 105 Boy Street, dumping and stream, uh, Allison, I remember seeing an email from you saying that if you had an opportunity, you'd go out to 105 Boy Street to take a look. Were you able to do that? I was not able to do that. Um, okay. I, I also think, I don't know if I was able to even get in touch with them either. Um, but no, I did not see it. I tried uh, calling him too and I was unable to get through. Um, and I guess his voicemail was full, so I was not able to leave a message. But we have his contact information, and let's see if we can try to get in touch with them between now and June 9th. And then finally, uh, for in terms of complaints, um, there was a complaint, uh, 25 Sunrise Avenue cutting trees. Um, I frankly don't know what's going on there. Um, I don't know that there are any wetland issues involved there. Through the chair. I don't claim to be a wetland specialist, but I was at the property this past week, and I do not see any violations wetland okay. related. Was there any tree cutting activity there? There was a small area that's been cleared. Um, there's a larger area that was cleared, but it looked like it's been cleared past years. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm, no, I'm not a wetland specialist, but I didn't see anything uh, jumping out at me. Okay. I think it may be more of a neighbor dispute. Than my my understanding is that there is dispute between neighbors in that area. There so, is. all right. Well, um, your representation is good enough for me. So. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. And then finally, we have minutes, and I want to applaud Ms. Buto for um, providing us with so many meeting minutes. And now I think we're actually caught up. Mm. So yippee! I I note, uh, and I'm looking at your notation that. Although we may be approved meeting minutes of September 23rd, 2020, we didn't vote on them. Is that mm -hmm. fair? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I went back in when I was listening. Yeah. All right. So it, that being said, is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes of September 23rd, 2020, which apparently we already discussed? So moved. Talk. All right. All right. Is there a second? I'll second, Nathan. All right. Thank you, Nathan. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Allison. I'm going to abstain. I don't think I was there. Uh, oh, no. It says I'm you were there. remotely. Never mind. Okay. I will uh, um, vote aye then as well. Okay. Uh, Nathan. I vote to approve. And so do I. And because there are four of us, the, meet, uh, the meeting minutes of September 23rd of 2020 are accepted. Um, also, with respect to the meeting minutes of December 9, 2020, is there a motion to accept the meeting minutes of December 9, 2020? So moved, Tom. All right, is there a second? I'll second that, Thompson. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Tom. Tom. Uh, Allison. Aye. Patrick. Aye. Nathan. Aye. And I also vote aye. Um, the motion carries. Those meeting minutes are approved. Now, with respect to meeting minutes that we have not seen, um, I reviewed the meeting minutes of uh, February 10th of 2021, and I saw I did not see the need to make any changes. Does anyone have any changes to make for the meeting minutes of February 10th of 2021? I do. Um, yep. On Mike Allen on the bottom of page two, it's just a the wrong date. It's just uh, should be the 13th, and then likewise on the next page, Oops, okay. Saturday the 13th. Change from the 10th. And other okay. than that, that, that's it. All right. Can you direct me again? Oh sure. Bottom of page two, okay. which oh. is Michael Garland site visit on Saturday, March 10th. The meeting was on the 10th, so it would be yeah, the 13th. This. Can you go to who was present? I don't know. If they look the site visit would be on Saturday the 13th. Okay. About the 10th. And then the same on the next yeah, page where it says Mike Garland. This site visit on Saturday, March 10th. We're, we're talking about. Are we talking about February 10th? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm having trouble finding I'm that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, saying, yeah, I'm on the bottom of page 10, and I don't. Uh, right. two, and I don't see right. what you're well, talking my about. February 10th then? I don't know. It's it's okay. Um, wow. Tom was. I'm a month ahead of time. He was testing our powers of observation. I do not have it. How and about Allison, that? Uh, you and I both passed. So you don't have the 10th. I do not have February 10th. Okay. Well, then you can't help us. I can't uh, help you. Allison, do I you apologize. Have, is, it's okay. Does anyone have any changes to the meeting minutes of February 10th? 
I do not. All right. Uh, let's see. Who else? Patrick, do you have any uh, changes? No, I do. Uh, Nathan, any changes? No changes. All right. In that case, is there a motion to accept the meeting minutes of February 10th, 2021? Moved, Mrs. All right, is there a she second? She was absent. Yeah. Oh, you, you can't do that, so. Gosh, darn it. I'm sorry. So moved. All right, all right, uh, all right, Nathan moved to accept the meeting I'll minutes. Tom, I'll second that. All right, second that. Okay, is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Tom. Aye. Uh, Patrick. Aye. Nathan. Aye. Allison. Abstain. You'll abstain, and I and also I also say aye. So we have uh, we have four votes. Uh, the meeting minutes of February tenth, of twenty twenty one, are approved. The next meeting minutes are March tenth, of twenty twenty one. So Tom, do you have any changes to me? I do. All right. On page two, on page three, can we just change the date from March tenth to the March thirteenth, which okay. is the correct date for Saturday? And I think we need to make the change also on page three. Yes. Where? Uh, but uh, seven lines down, site visit on yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay. That's it. Um, thank you. Does anyone else have any changes to the meeting minutes of March 10th? There being none, is there a motion to accept the meeting minutes of Wednesday, March 10th as amended? So moved, Tom. Is there a second? I'll second this, Nathan. All right, Nathan, Nathan, thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Tom? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Nathan? Aye. Allison? Pastor I'll abstain okay. yet again. Okay, mm -hmm. and I also mm -hmm. vote aye. It's a vote. There being four votes, the meeting minutes of March 10, 2021, as amended, are accepted. Uh, the next meeting minutes we have are uh, the meeting minutes for March 24th of 2021, and I actually did um, make a change on page four, where it's other business, 47 Washington Street, which was Whispering Pines, it should be a certificate of compliance, not completion. So, and it's actually um, shown twice. So in the heading, it should be certificate of compliance, and then two lines down where Tom made a motion to wish you the certificate of compliance. Again, completion should be crossed out and replaced with compliance. Uh, does anyone have any other changes to the meeting minutes of March 24th? There being none, is there a motion to accept the meeting minutes of March 24th, 2021 as amended? So moved, Tom. Is there a second? I second it, Pat. All right, Pat, very good. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Tom? Aye. Allison? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Nathan? Aye. And I also vote aye. It's a vote. The meeting minutes of March 24, 2021 as amended are accepted. The next meeting minutes we have... Um, are for April 14 of 2021. I reviewed the meeting minutes and I did not um, see the need to make any changes. Does anyone have, have a quorum? There's only three. Mm -hmm. I wasn't present for that meeting. Yeah. Okay, so actually we're gonna defer action on the meeting minutes of April 14, 2021 because we do not have sufficient votes to approve it. Uh, the next meeting minutes we have are for uh, April 28, 2021, and I um, I made a change to these. Where are they? April 28th? Yeah, no, I'm looking for them online. Okay. They're I don't see those here. online. They're not on here. Okay, I have a printed copy. Yeah, we, we can move forward. We just want to make sure we have a quorum. Okay. We do have a quorum. Yep. Um, okay. I can abstain. I haven't reviewed them. Oh. All right. If you don't want to take action on these, we can defer until the next meeting. So, okay. I would like to, but I just I can't. That's fine. 
So uh, I okay. will I will say this though. There was one change I wanted to make. Sure. It's page three. Uh, it's near the bottom where it says Steve O'Connell request to continue. It should be to May 12th. May 12th. Instead of April 14th. And then we will defer action, any other action on the meeting minutes of April 28th until our next meeting. And then our last set of meeting minutes. Doesn't look like they're on here either. All right. Uh, has anyone had an opportunity to review the meeting minutes of May 12th of 2021? I do. I didn't see any changes. Okay. Allison, you have a chance to review these? I'm sorry, it's not on here either. All right. So we're going to defer action on the meeting minutes of May 12th until our next meeting. So. We took care of what three sets, yeah. mm -hmm. four sets. So that's good. That's a good start. Yep. Sorry about that. Uh, that's all right. Sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, if there is no other uh, business, uh, is there a motion? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's do this. Two items. We've got two items <laughs> to decide. Wow. I need to get out of that habit. Um, with respect to um, Alliance, Alliance Environmental Group, the request to amend the existing order of conditions. Um, is there a motion? Uh, through the chair, it's my understanding that the um, this was rescinded. Correct? They don't they don't want to amend the order now. What? Well, what they the applicant feels that with with what's been proposed. Uh, with their VAC system, so that no uh, effluent or wastewater goes into the um, into the storm drain, that they do not need to amend um, the order of conditions. However, um, um, we know that uh, Mr. Arnold and also Allison had concerns with respect to whether or not um, this should be um, recorded or. Basically, the standard operating procedure and, and probably a copy of the safety data sheet should be attached to an, an amendment to the order condition so that it can be recorded at the registry of deeds. And so, there, there is no consensus apparently on what to do with this. So, um, I, I, you know, we, I believe we know how Allison feels. Um, I'm sort of well, Mike. He did say at the end that he would agree to do it outside the 100 foot buffer i mean at that point um isn't that what it already says on our our order of conditions i'm sure no vehicle washer i'm sure that's true mm -hmm. so um, are, are you satisfied then yeah, by that well, by that representation or by what appears in the order of conditions that we do not need to amend the order of conditions i mean i think if they start doing vehicle washing within 100 feet of the buffer zone it would be a problem, but I don't know that there's much we can add to conditions specifically other than documenting the method that they had, had suggested. But it's not like we can, you know, enforce everybody from here on out to use this company. Well, no, um, it's, it's not a question of enforcement. It's a question of putting, uh, I think, future buyers on notice that this is a condition. I mean, I right. frankly believe that, um, you know, when they, when we questioned them about the type of, um, of materials they were going to use to um, to wash their their fleet of trucks, that's mm -hmm. when the the matter um, was continued. And I think they went ahead and then contacted Fleet Wash, I think, to avoid a situation where they needed um, to have the order conditions amended. So I mean, I I looked at the materials. And I'm I believe that where they're going to take steps to cover the, um, the catch basin, do the work outside of 100 feet of the buffer zone, mm -hmm. and, and basically back up and remove any wastewater mm -hmm. that's generated, I'm, I'm satisfied by that. So I don't, I yeah, myself, I, don't I don't see the need to amend the order conditions. Mm -hmm. So do you I agree? Can, I, I concur, and if you look at the SOP here, mm -hmm. They don't necessarily have to, they can also put down a mat on the ground and contain the water that way. Right. As far as the rationale for covering the catch basins because every, all the water is going that way. Um, I, I, and I think that so, by doing that. All right. So, um, yeah, my main concern was just the distance. You know, they're originally proposing to do it like right in the back corner, right next to the wetlands. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, they can move it next to the building, which I had suggested that they did the last time. Mm. Um, All right. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, 
Nathan, what are your thoughts on this? So I agree. As long as it's outside of the 100 foot, I don't, I don't think there's any reason to amend, and it, it still accomplishes our goal of keeping them away mm -hmm. okay. in that weather area. Very good. Patrick, what do you think? I agree. Um, I asked the question um, of them because uh, the whole point of contention was that they were right against the wetland, and we had asked um, a month ago when we spoke to them first um, if they could do it elsewhere on their lot but outside the 100 foot buffer zone. Mm -hmm. If it's already on the order of conditions and they're using um, this company with um, good SOPs, then uh, I'm satisfied. All right. So um, my suggestion would be. I can send a letter to Mr. Hebner, and uh, I, what, I, what I would propose is that let him know that after considering um, what they've submitted to us on May 20th and after hearing his presentation that the commission has decided not to amend the order conditions provided that um, Fleet Wash is the vendor that they use to wash their trucks and that um, any washing activities take place outside of 100 outside the 100-foot buffer zone. So is there a motion to that effect? One more question for the chair. Yeah. Are we going to require them to record that with the registry of deeds no. also? We're not. No. Okay. So what I was wondering, and this came up in the, the classes that I was taking, is that we can we can actually ask people to put up signage that states, you know, this is a resource area and needs to be protected. And I don't know what the actual verbiage would be on the sign, but uh -huh. it just seemed like something that, you know, long term, you know, thinking 10, 15, 20 years in, in advance of us, that, that more information, and I just think a lot of times people just don't know any better, or, you know, they can play dumb, so if there's a sign there that says, you know, you must protect this area from 100 feet to the, to the wetland um, possibility. So I'm not sure what you're asking. Do you want the property owner to put up a sign? Well, I would maybe suggest that we consider putting those in orders of conditions in the future. Okay. Um, I don't know that it's worth amending this one for that, but um, I actually think yeah, that's a great. That's I, I think that's a great idea. Actually, mm -hmm. why don't we take it up in our next meeting? Excellent. Okay. Very good. And if I forget, remind me, please. Okay. Okay. So, um, in any event, is there a motion for me to send the letter as I described? Make a motion to do, to do such action. Okay. Is there, a, and that was Tom, is there a second? That. All right. Thank you, Allison. Is there, yes. any, is there any discussion? Uh, there being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Tom? Aye. Allison? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Nathan? Aye. And I also wrote aye. Okay, it's a vote. I will prepare a letter, Ginger, and I'll get that to you tomorrow or Friday. Sounds good. Okay, and then finally for um, Mass Electric. Is there a motion? Uh, this is Austin. Yes. Oh, is it a notice of intent? It was a notice mm -hmm. of intent, yes. Because they... Oh, I thought it was an RTA. No. I was going with the easy RTA one. <laughs> um... Tom, do you have your list in front of you? I do. And, Je and, and Allison, before you start, keep in mind that uh, poll number 60 is um, is considered routine maintenance, and so um, and uh, it's clearly it's clearly set forth in their um, in their notice of intent. So um, I just I just note that. Um, anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt you. So, is there a motion, Allison? I was going to defer to Tom, but I'll give it a try. So right. I um, I present a motion that we uh, issue an order, standard order of conditions okay. for the poles on Leicester Street and Rochdale Street for okay. the Massachusetts Electric Company. Yeah. And uh, let's see, one, mm -hmm. special, special conditions one, um, Two? No. Is there a replication area? Uh, no. no. Two is, is, not, right? two is no. the as-built okay. plan. Do we want them to revise with an mm -hmm. as-built? Oh. Yes. Okay. Don't we? I'm, I'm asking. I don't know. You, you know what? This, 
you're you're the captain of your own ship, and so um, you. I understand. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm not that concerned with this, so I wouldn't say we need to. But I'll, I'm open to anyone else's additions. Mm -hmm. um, All right. You want an escort? Well, mm. Yeah. What do you guys think? We got we got plans that were submitted. I mean. Okay. Tom, um, Tom says one? no. Tom says no. Patrick, All right. should there be an ESCO plan? No. All right. Nathan? Um, no. Okay. I tend to agree, actually. Okay. So we've got special condition one. Continue, please. Okay. Three. Yes. Uh, five. Yes. Eight. Yes. Nine, but that shouldn't really come up. Nine doesn't um, apply at all because they're not property owners. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't think ten. I don't think there was any endangered species. No. Uh, Eleven, or again, is that property owner one? Yeah, I don't think we have to worry about them okay. dumping lawn clippings. Ten. And then also you need to consider. And then they also, you need to yeah, they also need 14. That's correct. Exactly. So, your motion is a motion to issue the standard order plus special conditions one, one, three, one, three five, five, eight, 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 and fourteen. And one other thing through the chair, we do yes. need to issue um, a, the 25 foot no build. Um, That's 14. That is 14. Yes. Why do I have DEP? Well, mine is a DEP sign and sign number, so no. okay, I'm going to cross that out and put I, maybe waiver of. We revised it's handwritten in. It's handwritten in, that's why I yeah. Okay, it's revised basically November 16th. Okay, I can I make mean, sure you get an extra copy. Thank you. All right, so anyway, there's a motion to, again, standard order plus special conditions 1, 3, 5, 8, and 14. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Tom. Aye. Uh, Allison. Aye. Patrick. Aye. Nathan. Aye. And I also vote aye. It's a vote. Okay. Is there anything else? To the chair, I just have one thing. Sure. Um, June 9th. Yes. Commissioners are able to come into town hall for the meeting. Okay. We are able to still do the remote meeting as of June 9th. Mm -hmm. um, state of emergency goes away the 15th. Yes. So depending on what happens with the special legislation, that'll determine whether we can still do remote past the 15th. Okay. I thought, um, I thought, oh, all right, because restrictions end on, on Saturday, right? Yeah, but the state of emergency is dated for June 15th, okay. so we can we can do the, the uh, remote meetings up until then without okay. the legislation. If the legislation passes, we may extend that period. All right. So I don't know if you've heard that. It if um, there's been um, a suggestion that remote meetings may continue past June 15th. So I think I can say with some confidence that our next meeting on June 9th will also be done remotely, but perhaps after that we'll actually have the opportunity to meet in the same place for the first time in 16 months. So June 9th people will be able to come in here if they choose to. Okay. But it'll also be remote. They'll also okay. have the right. option of either or. All right. So if you heard Caleb, um, he said if you want to come into the town hall for the meeting on June 9th, you can. If you want to do it remotely, that's fine too. I'll totally leave it up to you. So, and um, again, things may be changed depending on the status of, um, of the legislation that I think Governor Baker has proposed. Um, if there's no nothing else, is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion we adjourn the meeting. Okay, that was Tom. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Okay. And all those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. 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 All right, it's a vote. All right, everyone, thank you very much. Um, I hope you have a pleasant holiday weekend, and um, we will see you on June 9th. And actually, I will see you on June 5th. And perhaps we can even maybe go out to breakfast. Absolutely. All right. So we'll, I'll be in touch. I'll send an email before. Wow, good and brave. I know, huh? So um, <laughs> we'll see if we can we can do that. But I'll send out an email just confirming that, okay?
Thursday Saturday. All right, thank you. Thank you. And, and Nathan, you. can I uh, speak to you tomorrow? Sure. Okay. I um, yeah, I'll speak to you tomorrow then. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Take care. Right, you too.